The poppies blow between the crosses, row on row. That mark our place, and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing, fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. We are dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from falling hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep through poppies grow in Flanders fields. We all have freedom, all we use or know. This our fathers bought for us long and long ago. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this 100th anniversary of the Royal Brooks Legion and Remembrance Sunday. On behalf of the chairman, John Pratt, who last night was at the Festival of Remembrance carrying the digital standard, I'd like to give you his warm welcome and thank you for attending today. For those of you that watched, the remembrance last night at the Albert Hall, you will be aware that the Royal British Legion commissioned a poem on the 100th anniversary of the Royal British Legion. The poem was this. In the belly of this building, steeped in history, so great we meet together to remember and pay respect contemplate on each chest that grows a poppy with petals red and a leaf of green. A symbol echoing a sacrifice, a memory regarding what it means. Hardly more than a hundred years ago came a call impossible to ignore. A global conflict was emerging and two, the rumbling of war. So many young and brave and hopeful fought for a word, for a world they would never know. Fields that once were green, now stained by bloodshed, became a place where the poppies grow. There was a soldier who was present. He was also a poet. In Flanders Fields, the poem that you've just heard, in 1915, he penned that poem, rich and haunting, about the poppies he had seen. Through a symbol of that flower, those who survived could dare to hope it would commemorate the fallen. Now through the stories that they spoke, it was a poppy for their contribution. Since every human life is equal, a reminder that the war to end all wars must never have a sequel. But barely more than two decades later, once again the shrapnel fell. And once again brave souls would go to fight to face the last farewell. But they kept believing through the darkness that in their time the day would come. The day the fight that they endured would like all things one be be done. From then till now we've still known conflict, we've still known loss of life and still so many men and women mark the utmost sacrifice. The call never goes unanswered at any time. Our values meet with threat and in the light we still make and mark the silence. As we give thanks and pay respect, that's why today we wear a poppy for our battles past to modern day. And what courage guides our hearts and minds 
that will never slip away. And now you know friends assemble, sometimes I even dare to dream that a hundred years from now children will still know what it means and on their path to peace and progress each one of them will always know the story of what that path was built and the ones that made it so. So in this room alive with poppies, the petals red and the leaf of green, a symbol echoing their sacrifice, a memory guarding what it means. We share this moment of remembrance. We remember all those who came before as through remembrance we honour and hold and hope forevermore. Shortly you will hear the history and you will hear all about the last post. We've all heard the haunting sound of the last post. It's a tune that gives us a lump in our throats and usually tears in our eyes. Not many are aware of the last post song or the history behind it. Reportedly it began in 1862 when during an American Civil War when the Union Army Captain Robert Elcombe was with his men near Harrison Landings in Virginia. The Confederate Army was on the other side of a narrow strip of land. During the night, Captain Ellicum heard the moans of a soldier who lay severely wounded on the field. Not knowing if it was a Union or a Confederate soldier, the captain decided to risk his own life and bring the stricken man back for medical attention. Crawling on his stomach through the gunfire, the captain reached the stricken soldier and began pulling him towards his encatchment. When the captain finally reached his own lines, he discovered it was actually a Confederate soldier, but the soldier was dead. The captain lit a lantern and suddenly caught his breath and went numb with shock. In the dim light, he saw the face of a soldier. It was his own son. The boy had been studying music in South when the war broke out. Without telling his father, the boy enlisted into the Confederate Army. The following morning, heartbroken, the father asked permission for his, from his superiors to give his son a full military burial, despite his enemy status. His request was only partially granted. The captain had asked if he could have a group of army band members to play a funeral degree for his son at the funeral. The request was turned down since the soldier was a confederate. But out of respect for the father, they did say they could give him only one musician. The captain chose a bugler. He asked the bugler to play a series of musical notes he found on a piece of paper in the pocket of his dead son's uniform. This wish was granted. The haunting melody we now know as the last post used at military funerals was born. Eric. Grow not old, 
as we that are left for all. Age should not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Carry standards.
home, tell them of us and say for your tomorrow we gave our today. Ladies and gentlemen, that completes this short service. If you have poppy crosses, you may now lay them. The box will remain there throughout lunch. There are poppy crosses available uh, on our poppy table if you would like to remember the fallen amongst your own families. Thank you.